Hi, I'm Jen Matthew Sadler, and in this series of videos, we're taking a look at new games between AlphaZero, DeepMind's general purpose artificial intelligence system, and Stockfish, winner of the TCEC Season 9 computer chess competition and one of the strongest engines in the world. This game is a treat for Sicilian Nidor fans like me. Um, it shows uh, AlphaZero um, taking on a Sicilian Nidorf, um, making actually a slight tactical misjudgment and uh, losing time and on the back foot. And then we see it defending in the AlphaZero way, creating maximum confusion with incredible tactics in order to hold a draw against fantastic stockfish play. It's a real treat, so uh, we're going to have a look at it together now. So after e4, c5, knight f3, d6, we see the opening that I played all my professional career and loved. Um, now this opening was actually, it's not an alpha zero choice. Um, I'll make that one criticism of alpha zero. It doesn't like my favorite opening. Uh, but this was a, a game that started from a position from the TCEC openings book. And this was the last move stipulated a3 by white. So Alpha Zero, um, as so often actually, it's very impressive, plays the opening very thematically, very idiomatically, because the normal thing that you do in the uh, Sicilian Nidorf is you leave your king in the center as long as possible, and you get your counterplay going on the queen side as quickly as possible. There's no time to waste. And Alpha Zero plays rook b8, bishop g2, and b4. In we go. So after a takes b4, h6, bishop h4, rook b4, um, we've always got, uh, already got a little bit of play on the b-file there, and also attacking the knight on d4. So Stockfish brings its bishop back to e1, queen to b6, attacking the pawn on b2 and the knight on d4, and then bishop f2. Now this, was, um, this position has been reached before in a grandmaster game, and black played the queen back to c7. Just like this. However, um, alpha zero uh, played the move queen b7, um, which looks a little bit odd, but does keep the pressure on the pawn on b2. However, Stockfish, calculating monster, played the move rook g1, ignoring that threat. And it turns out, uh, quite unexpectedly, that um, the threat against b2, uh, which looks horrific, is actually not very dangerous. Black would simply, after rook takes b2, white plays e5. And after queen b4, knight to c6. I mean, these are the type of lines that, um, you know, in the good old days before computers, you would have said, oh, well, this can't possibly be good for white, be good for white. But um, now with computers, we sort of say, oh, yeah, no, I, I suppose that is true. Quite amazing, actually. It's amazing how, how much uh, chess computers have brought to the game of chess in terms of quality and ideas. So the idea is that after queen a3 takes, bishop takes, knight e4, um, Black seems to have a mating attack, but actually simply doesn't. Um, these two knights on e4 and c6 cover everything, and white is simply winning. So, um, well, after Stockfish played uh, rook g1, alpha zero spotted this and had to make a little side shuffle, queen c7. But it's uh, lost a move in actual fact. And um, this move rook g1 is pretty useful when you think that white's plan is to play g4 to g5. So um, Stockfish uh, continued calmly, but with a very nice move here, bishop f3. And the idea is to play g5. Um, and this bishop is covering the square on h5. So after g5, the knight on f6 has actually got nowhere to go. And this is where alpha zero's method of defense comes into its own. Now, in terms of defensive uh, technique, Stockfish is the, the world's greatest expert at uh, you're hanging uh, on a precipice by the edge of it, uh, by, by its uh, fingernails and holding on there forever. Alpha Zero goes for confusion. Alpha Zero goes for counterplay and massive uh, attacks. And uh, this is what it does. So knight b6, knight a2, rook a4, very risky rook position, but uh, keeping the rook in the, around the area of the king. Um, and now e5, another disruptive move. Um, chasing the white knight away from the center. Now, of course, what you're also doing, you're weakening central squares like d5. But on the other hand, you are disrupting white's pieces and causing chaos. Stockfish is not afraid of chaos and plays h4. And this is uh, threatening a very unpleasant idea, g5 again, chasing the knight away. And um, here we see uh, that alpha zero is willing to do anything in order to keep its pieces in active uh, positions. It's not going to go back. It plays h5. 
Now, if white played g5, then Stockfish, uh, then Alpha Zero could play knight g4 and get a new strong outpost for the knight. But of course, this move does just lose a pawn. G takes h5. But on the other hand, white loses the possibility to go g4 to g5. Alpha Zero takes the opportunity to bring a bishop, uh, develop a bishop, which is also pointing towards the queen side. And here, Stockfish plays the move rook g7. Quite an important move, actually. You might think, oh, you know, engine grabbing pawns, but it's actually much more than that. It's a very good move. What's the power of this move? Um, the idea is that by taking the pawn on g7, white stops black from ever castling kingside. And that means that um, the rook on h8 is thus never going to get into play. It's never going to be able to join in to uh, black's queenside attack. So actually, um, Stockfish is doing what Alpha Zero often does to, uh, to it. It's cutting the board in half and saying, your kingside pieces, they're not going to be able to attack my king. It's a very clever move. It's a very good move. Um, so whilst I was playing through the game, I really thought, hmm, looking a bit desperate for Alpha Zero here. Um, and now, move 25, uh, it spots a quite astonishing uh, tactical sequence. I mean, astonishing also when you realize that um, I mean, Alpha Zero is not calculating, calculating, uh, like, like, uh, like Stoffage. It calculates a lot fewer moves. But what it does, it finds the best initial path and then looks deeply into that. And, uh, well, it's still absolutely amazing what it finds. So this move a5, bishop e1, and then rook takes a2. And there's quite a, quite a funny point that, uh, that, uh, that, that's been made here. So I'll just, uh, we'll just move on with the... Uh, uh, with the moves, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about it. So knight a3 check, king a1, knight takes c2, king b1, stockfish expert at rolling with the punches there, knight e1 and queen e1. And um, yeah, I mean, analysing this game, and uh, it suddenly you know, occurred to me that, um, uh, well, actually, this has been very impressive tactics, but hasn't black just exchanged off all of, the, all of the pieces that it had to attack the white king? It's done this beautiful sacrificial attack, but it's got nothing left. You know, what on earth is it going to do now? And this is where the, um, well, the real genius of this, um, uh, this combination uh, uh, arises. Because Alpha Zero has spotted this idea, which is to play a3, b3, and then a2 check, giving away another pawn. What on earth is that? Well, the idea is that after king a2, black plays this move, knight d5. And, um, well, just remember what I said about um, Stockfish playing rook g7 and saying your king side pieces will never get involved on the queen side. Well, this move turns out on its head. Uh, the amazing tactical point is that, um, uh, well, first of all, this knight is threatening to come into c3 or b4. These are big squares, so white can't allow that. But after e takes d5, black's got this incredible idea, queen c2, king a1, and e4. And I hope uh, you've spotted already, this bishop is coming to the diagonal, and that king on a1 is going down. Um, well, not going down completely, in actual fact. White's got various ways of, um, of, um, of neutralizing that and, and reaching a draw. But, um, but this is an incredible way to uh, maintain the balance. So um, Stockfish played, of course, uh, the best move. It played um, rook takes d5, bishop d5, king b1, and bishop b7. And, you know, alpha zero's uh, still well, on, on the pessimistic side about his position. It still thinks it's worse. But this is a very difficult uh, position for white to win, despite the two extra pawns. First of all, um, the, all the pawns are split. Um, white's got doubled h pawns, which are not fantastic. And black's got, you know, a very nice combination of queen and two bishops, which, uh, you know, can make an enormous amount of, um, of, uh, uh, of activity in the position. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's actually quite hard to, uh, to think of white winning this, especially after Alpha Zero's plan of exchanging off rooks. That's the last really annoying white piece. After that, um, Alpha Zero, to be honest, held this draw without too many problems. Um, it was, um, as you can see, the uh, Alpha Zero gets its queen in, it gets its bishop in, and it gets the other bishop in. And after this has happened, nothing much is going to happen. And I think um, um, 
yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, probably Stockfish would have uh, gone for the draw by repetition. Alpha Zero does not like draws by repetition and uh, keeps on trying to play whatever happens. But in the end, after some more manoeuvring like this, uh, the game ended in a draw by perpetual check. What do I love about this game? Well, um, first of all, it's my opening. It's the opening I love, and uh, it's lovely to see it played well. Secondly, I think it's a really great example of um, Alpha Zero defending a position. Um, when it starts from its own openings, it knows exactly what it wants from them, and um, it's very hard to get it into trouble. But when it's put into an unfamiliar situation, here it is playing the knight off like a pro, you know, disrupting the white pieces, throwing the pieces forward, finding these brilliant sacrifices, and then this astonishing knight d5 at the end. A really, really great game. Hope you enjoyed it too.